Welcome back to another HTML CSS Dreamweaver tutorial. In our web design class we've been just learning how to incorporate text and talking a little bit about colors with web pages and yesterday I happened to go and watch Across the Spider-Verse and we loved it. Thought it was a great movie and I thought what a great idea for a simple web page. So we're gonna make a Spider-Man inspired web page it, that could be kind of used as like a blog template and again we're just sticking with text and colors on this and a few simple elements to practice before we start going on to our next lesson so let's go ahead and start looking at this if we want to talk about type first uh, we've mentioned like the importance of having two or three typefaces that you can use consistently through a website and so just using Google Fonts and then at searching for them in here, uh, the first one that I had found that I really liked was called Bangers. And so in here, this is kind of what it looked like. And then I clicked a little plus here and it adds it into our Google Fonts over here. And you can find that by going to the Selected Family section if yours isn't showing up on there. Uh, so that was one that I searched for. Uh, another one that I liked, uh, instead of just using like the typical Comic Sans that you see people using, uh, K-A-L-A-M. And I really like this hand-drawn style of this. I think it looks good. And so I went with that. But uh, because this would be something for like my H2 text, I decided to go with the Bold 700. I thought that would look nice. Uh, then the other one that I added, and this could really be kind of anything, I just went and searched for serif uh, because I wanted something that was like a, almost like a newsprint. You know, when you think of Spider-Man and MJ and, and the ties to the newspaper, something that would maybe look like it was typed in a newspaper, but I didn't really want to use like Times New Roman or anything. Uh, so I looked at this PT serif. I didn't dislike it. I, I thought I was going to go with it at first and then I just ended up going with Source Serif Pro and I think that'll look nice. So those are the three uh, typefaces that I'm going to incorporate into my web page, this little Spider-Man blog page. And then the other thing I went to was Adobe Color. This is a great place if you are trying to find um, different color palettes you can look at trends and it'll it'll show you like oh these are some uh, trendy ones that are used in fashion right now or trendy ones that are used in web design or illustration and those type of things uh, you can also explore and see different things but I just went in and kind of used uh, colors that I think are prominent in the spider-man and spider-verse movies so I went with a real dark blue in here uh, I went with kind of a deeper red and then I went with a lighter blue. And so I was thinking maybe this for the paragraph text, this for the H1s and H2s. And then I thought maybe this for like a page box. And instead of just using plain white, um, I may even lighten this up just a little bit more. Instead of using just plain white, I thought... I would go with like this real light pink just because of the colors from uh, from Gwen Stacy's spider Gwen uh, costume and I don't know if I'm gonna incorporate this pink in there anywhere but just in case I have that handy also so these two resources I just have in my tab up here that I'm gonna use and you know just like we have two or three typefaces uh, for a web page that we want to incorporate consistently same with the colors you know so these are kind of my three main colors and then this is you know just kind of a neutral white or whatever but but slightly with a pink uh, color to it and I think that'll work nicely for this beginning blog setup that we're gonna build okay so I'm gonna put that back over there and now we can go to our folders and in our Dreamweaver projects folder I just made a folder in here called spidey web because I think I'm gonna call it spidey web blog 
and that folder is in there that's where I'm going to save everything to and then going to Dreamweaver I want to go here to site and new site and then let's click this little folder and then we will find our spidey web folder and we'll have it selected and then we will go to select folder and then here for the site name I think I will just call it spidey web blog I think that'll work nice and so we can then click save and then we're ready to open up and create a new document so we'll go file and new and new document HTML none up here for the title we'll just type in spidey blog home because it'll act as the this quote unquote home page and we'll click create and you'll see here I'm kind of in split mode on live view and right now I have my standard workspace up here so you might want to make your sure that yours kind of match if you if you're not familiar enough with this program and you're not sure things are located that might help you find what I'm using at the same time a little quicker then we want to save this right away so we can go file and save as and again this is the home page so we'll call it index.html and save all right I think we are ready to go uh, I, I, we have the head section basically done you can add your meta stuff up there if you wish uh, but this is fine for what we're working with right now and then I'm gonna go here to the body and you can either enter in like our first lessons we did just code and then we kind of showed how you can enter things in uh, with the insert tab over here so I might use a little bit of both uh, just kind of back and forth it's kind of up to you uh, but if you go over here to insert make sure you're in the body section uh, the first thing that I am gonna put in there is going to be a header so going to the second batch of stuff and we'll click header and I don't need a class or anything for it I'll just click OK and then I want to put a heading in that header so over here for the heading section I'm gonna click that little drop down and make sure that I select H1 and I will type in spidey web blog And I think that looks good. I may play around with the uppercase or lowercase later, but at least right now I have that spot there kind of as a placeholder. Uh, underneath the header, then we want to go ahead and go to a div. And with this div, I'm going to give it a class of page box, and then I'll click OK and in that page box I can put in an article so I'll find article and insert that I don't need a class for the article and in this article we can put in an h2 so I'll go up here to heading and I'll type in h2 and then after the h2 I can put in just a regular paragraph so up here I'll find the paragraph area and I think that that works I might change the h2 and just type in like blog entry title so that we kinda know what that is and then this down here is just like our paragraph for our text and that should work for our actual blog now just to kind of see how this would look like because as you enter in more entries into your blog more articles or whatever you want to call them uh, then we can click article and we can just select that whole thing and you're always going to 
follow that same exact uh, format through through there now your articles you might be adding pictures and stuff later uh, but again right now we're primarily focusing on just these semantic elements that we've learned and we're learning about our or we're practicing our h1 h2 and paragraphs uh, underneath the div then I can go here and we'll put in our last section which is going to be our footer so we'll select footer and we'll click OK and then in there we will put in one last paragraph and we can type in something like um, created by and just put your name in there and then we'll use our copyright sign entity code and copy semicolon and then we'll put in the date in there and I think that looks just fine so the HTML is done we're all set with that so we can go to file and save and now what we need to do is we need to start creating our CSS document so we can style this so to create a new CSS document you know again just make sure that everything's saved up here and then we want to go over here to CSS designer and we want to add a source and go to create a new CSS file it opens up this little window we'll click browse just to make sure we're in the correct folder and then I always name my style folders styles.css and then click save and I want to make sure it's linked and I'll click OK and then we'll notice here in our in our HTML it linked it and we also see up here where it added styles.css there's currently not anything in there other than just our character set and that's fine okay so let's go ahead and think of like the biggest area first so we're gonna kind of incorporate our typeface and colors at the same time and I just want to think of like the biggest area of the page and then I'll kind of work my way down to the more specialized areas and so uh, what we can do before we get over there like we can go right underneath this style and if I find my uh, Google fonts here I'm gonna copy this little section in here that has links to all three of those typefaces that I added through through uh, Google fonts if you're gonna use web safe fonts you know these will show up on anyone's computer even if it's not installed because we're bringing them in this way but if you choose to use a typeface that you have installed or a typeface that is just like a regular generic kind you don't need to worry about this part but I'm gonna paste this right here and then I don't really have to worry about anything else over here in terms of my in terms of my uh, HTML uh, then if I go to my styles then this is kind of where I will place my uh, stuff in for styling this page okay so now that I'm in styles I want to go here to styles.css and I'm gonna add a selector alright in the first selector if I'm thinking big picture first I'm thinking of the body of the web page so I'm gonna type in body and enter and then you can also type it over here in your CSS if you're more comfortable with that uh, for the properties of the body if I go down here and it says add property and add value I'll click in property and I'm gonna select background hyphen color and here I'm gonna use my Adobe colors that I that I put together on this palette uh, so up here where it says background color and then for the little characteristic of it I can type in pound sign one three three 
AA8. And then I'll press enter. And that's going to be the background. Now, sometimes in Dreamweaver, it's not going to show up right away. So what you can do is go up here to the drop down menu and switch to design. And you can either see it in there or you can then switch back to the other view that you're using. Uh, most of the time when I'm testing out my page, I just open up the folder that I created and then I open up my page in here to see what it looks like in there. And that's obviously going to be more accurate uh, than any text editor uh, preview that you're going to have. Uh, so we got the body done. That looks fine. And now what I want to do is the header section up here is, is what I want next. So I'm going to add another selector. And in here I'll type in header. And for the header, there's a few things I might do with this. Uh, one of them is going to be uh, the background hyphen color. And I'm going to use this uh, light color that I have in here. So this pound sign FFF7FE. All right. And then after that, and we see it shows up there. Uh, that doesn't really give us a whole lot of room around the text in there. So I'm going to add another property. And I'm going to go with padding. And I think I'm going to go 10px space 0. So that's going to put some padding above and below the H1, but still in the header. But it's going to put 0 to the left or right. See how that looks. So that, that makes it a little bigger in there. And you know, I might even click up here and let's try 20, 20 and zero. And we can always adjust it more later if needed. Uh, another thing I would like to do is I would like to put a border kind of around the outside of this. Normally I don't go with the borders, but in this case, I do think uh, it'll make it more like comic booky whatever the right word for that is. Uh, so in here, I'm going to type in border. And I'm going to type in solid space 3px space. And then I'm going to use this dark color here. Uh, so I'll go pound sign 060026. All right, and then we have kind of a nice border around the outside, and I think that will work decently there. Um, now, inside that header, we have our text, but I think I'll wait on the text until I get to the H1, and I'll, I'll kind of keep those in the same organized level of my CSS. really doesn't matter a whole lot what order, but I think just for convenience of finding things later, that'll work better for me. So now what I might do is go to dot. I'll just do it consistently over here. So uh, adding another selector, I could type dot page box down there. But if I add another selector and type in dot page box because it was a class for our div, I could use just plain div up there. But in case I add another div later this way, this is the only one that's impacted. Then I'll press enter. And for the page box, I'm going to use something like uh, width of 70%. And I will go add another property and say margin of auto. And then I'm going to add a background color to that. So I will say uh, background hyphen color. And I'll use this same uh, background color as I used for the header. So let's go pound sign FFF 7FE. And that's not bad at all. I also want to put a border around that too. I'll, I'll match the same border. So I'll go uh, border and then I'm going to go 3px 
or sorry, I'm going to go solid space 3px space pound sign 060026 and then enter. All right, that looks good. Um, this did run up here to the top and kind of forced itself right next to my header up here. So I might go up here to header and then go down here and add another property to the header. And I'm going to add a margin hyphen bottom. And let's go 10px and see what that looks like. All right, that's not too bad. We can always make it bigger later. Um, it's nothing that is going to be going to be permanent in there, and it looks a little different the next time you find it. It's kind of more of a visual thing in here, uh, but you can find your your padding and the border and the margin, all that stuff looks a little bit different, but that's all right and I am gonna try 20 pixels and see how that looks that looks a little bit better a little more breathing space in there okay so the page box looks fine uh, now I am going to add the content for my articles so if I go down here and use or go to the side make sure I have styles on here add another selector and place in an article uh, for the article I just want to put a little space in here so these aren't right next to the edge there uh, so I can use margin and I'm going to use five pixels and that's going to shift that there I also thought it would be cool to have a margin or not well for the article to have like a dotted line separating our articles might be fun to play around with uh, so for that I'm going to go border hyphen bottom and I can go dashed space and then I'm going to use pound sign 060026 and I think that'll look decent in there it's something we can always change the color with later if we want and that's pretty decent I do like how it matches the border uh, around the outside and I sometimes people will use an HR uh, for those but I think border for the bottom is just as effective and I don't know sometimes I I go that style instead but I do like how that's turning out right there okay now for the type so we can go with the H1 at the very top so we'll add another selector in here and we'll place in H1 and for the property we will go let me look at my notes here refer to this note and for the property for this H1 we're going to use font hyphen family and then I'm going to type in in single quotes because I'm just going to use it exactly the same way it is right here I'm going to type in bangers and then a comma and then I'm going to type in cursive so it's like your primary fonts and then what are you going to use when it doesn't show up I could use cursive but I could also use impact because I think bangers is more of a, a thicker typeface than than it is a handwriting so I might go with that 
uh, bangers in impact and then in here that is pretty small up there so I'll go, let's go over here to our color wheel and then I can type in color and I'll use the red so let's go pound sign B3 zero 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 let's make that color in there first and then we'll make it larger so we can go font hyphen size and let's try 72 px see how that looks I mean, that does look pretty good in there if we want to we could even add a little margin in there if we wanted to slide it in a little bit it's kind of your call with that on how you want yours to look okay moving on we'll add another selector and next thing we have is our h2s so let's use h2 for our selector and then for the property I'd like to use that same red color so I'll just type that here while I can still see this on here and I'll go pound sign B3000000 and that changes the color of all of those H2s in there uh, then if I go here to my type and I double check make sure I have my H2 selected sometimes it unselects in there that little rascal then I can type in font hyphen family and here I'll use my single quote K A L A M single quotes and then a comma and then I'll use cursive here so if that first font doesn't show up I get some other type of cursive in there that doesn't look too bad might be something I would make a little bit larger eventually but I think for right now it's okay and then for the actual paragraph type we'll go here and use another selector and type in the letter P and in here we will use font hyphen family and then I'll use this source serif pro so single quote source serif pro single quote and then a comma and then if that's not available whatever the default serif uh, that someone has installed on their computer will be fine and then for the color of that typeface I want to use this dark blue in there that very very dark blue so we'll go down here to add property and we can use uh, color and then we will use pound sign zero six zero zero two six all right that looks good good consistent look and then when we get down here to the footer there's a few things we can do for that to make it look better one of them add a selector and we'll type in footer and in here for the property I'll go text hyphen align and center to center it in there and then I also would like to maybe uh, have that with a little bit more space above and below it uh, but I'm actually going to do that and adjust the type in its own area so I'll go up here because this is a paragraph and these are all styled for a paragraph but I can go up here to selector and I can go footer space paragraph so this would be any paragraph text that's only found in the footer and I'll press enter 
and in here I will type in uh, color and I'll use this light color so I'll go pound sign FFF 7 FE there we go and then also I might go font hyphen weight and select bold and that stands out a little bit better and then finally one other thing to maybe do would be uh, padding and let's see what happens if we go padding and we add like 20 px all right so then we have a little bit more room in there for the footer and it doesn't look like we just forgot to put it in there if we wanted we could change the background color for it I just thought this would look kind of nice and that way we have this header area and then here's where all our articles will go in kind of newest at the top you know and then it, you just add it that way and then our footer down is kind of its own separate item and there we have it we can go file save all and refresh it in our page and see how this looks if we make it a little bit bigger and I don't think that's a terrible start eventually we'll learn like how to push the uh, the footer down to the very bottom but today I just wanted to focus primarily on this header and our page box with our articles and those things and then have our nice uh, footer area and then to focus on our hierarchy with our with our text in there so hopefully that gives you some things to play around with and if you think it's incomplete just keep it handy and as we learn how to add images and as we learn to add more elements it's something you can apply to this but that's little spider-man little pun sort of intended web design in there and uh, hopefully it was something that kind of gave you some tools to work with for your web design toolbox I appreciate you watching if you haven't seen spider-man across the spider-verse better go out and see that I give it a five-star best movie I've seen this year and I appreciate you watching and have a great day